what we know about back pain is that it's only 1% of back pain disorders that have really serious stuff, like it could be the cause, like a malignancy, a fracture, an inflammatory disorder, um, and only around 5% where back pain is linked to, say, a disc prolapse that's where there's some kind of nerve compression. 99.5% of back pain disorders have no diagnosis based on scan. But the problem we've created is that whereas 50 years ago, people would have been called, have had what they used to call lumbago or back pain or a back sprain, now we've created another problem because we have highly sensitive imaging techniques like the MRI scanner, which picks up so-called abnormalities in almost everybody because if you scan anybody's spine, 90% have got degenerate discs. Around 45% have got dis, you know, disc bulges or protrusions, 20, 30% uh, protrusions or annular tears or facet joint arthrosis. So in trying to identify the 5%, we've created this massive belief in the majority of back pain patients that back pain is caused by these findings on scan, which actually are normal findings that are not predictive of back pain. The MRI scan comes back and it, I've touched on it shortly, but it showed uh, herniation in the you know, L5 uh, S1, and I think it was a, a small enough damage herniation or bulge in the uh, L4, L5. I obviously mentioned herniations, and at that point, my anxieties had probably elevated somewhat, and I think my pain had, had gone up as well. I had my MRI scans done back a couple of years after that, and got told I had to have an operation. I had to stop everything I was doing. And they said that because it's my lower disc, I had to go through the front, might not be able to have kids. Now, all these sort of scary stuff. People said, oh, it can take you um, a year to 18 months. We ran a surgeon. We were going to get a to the surgeon. His PA said it was, she's going to take 10 years. Another one in the Giza and Isle Street told me I'd die with backache. You'd what, sorry? I would die with backache. Kept being told these horror stories, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I quit that I was in bits. Yeah. I was told I hadn't seen this in a young man. It was like I had a back of a 70 year old. That's what I was told. Yeah. And I went to the GP. All I really wanted from him was painkillers. And he said, the last person, my wife was very fine, if the last person to come to see me who had this type of back pain for this long had cancer. That was a GP. That was a GP. And how did that feel? Well, you can imagine, can't you? I mean, if I've got an headache, I've got a brain tumour. Yeah. So if someone's saying that to me, it just escalates it a million percent. And then what's happened is we then have this belief that back pain is caused by these damaged structures. We start treating the, the, the spine like it is damaged. We tell people, oh, you've got to be protect your back and keep it straight and watch out when you lift, strengthen your core, <coughs> which are things that we know people with pain already do. And I went to the physio, um, and I was there for a good maybe eight months, um, doing various they focused on my core muscles, uh, doing various exercises. The physiotherapist started saying that there was muscular imbalances, uh, needs to do some core strengthening, um, uh, prescribe a few exercises um, to sort of strengthen the back, strengthen the core. Um, and that, that lasted for a while. Never really any improvement in natural fact it was getting worse. Right. So what kind of things were um, they? It was getting me doing things like the, cr no, the crunches, stuff on the ball, uh, good mornings where I was just trying to keep tilt, uh, or try and bend with my hips and keep the front back. So in standing? Basically, yeah. yeah. And it made it worse. I'll be doing these core strength exercises. Okay. What kind of things? Um, so that when I'm sitting here now, I'm, I'm tensing my core, mm -hmm. core muscles, and when I stand up, it'll be mainly from mm -hmm. here, and I'll be pushing up with my um, yeah. buttocks. Um, and every time I move, if I'm going to so I've opened the car door, I tense my core muscles and things like that. Is that helpful for you, do you think, or not? What? Um, for your back pain? <laughs> and then we've done, gone down this other path, they're saying, well, we've got to inject the spine and um, you know, use different kinds of pharmacological approaches and then end up with fusing the back in an attempt to treat it. I went to sort of consultant a couple of weeks ago and back pain still persistence. Um, I got going to his office and said, right Chris, what are you, what are you doing? Um, well, what's the problem? So he explained the problem, brings up the images and straight away he sort of says, well, I'm looking at 
looking at your scans, he said, you're not, he said, you're not a suitable candidate for any invasive work. Mm. Um, but the only thing that would fit you is a fusion. So naturally, I prep myself again. We kind of have this, develop this whole belief system around that back pain is all about structure. And so we've directed our treatments at treating the symptom of pain, and we haven't done a very good job of it. In terms of the cause of the problem, what we understand is it's a lot more complex. Back pain can be caused by a number of factors, both what we call peripheral drivers, things like abnormal muscle tension or muscle guarding, uh, adopting postures or movement patterns that are rigid and guarded and protective, which can create stress on pain-sensitive structures. So if I ask you to bend down towards your toes, what do you reckon about that? Uh, Have you, would you do that? Yeah. Not, not really. No. Very, a bit nervous of that. Yeah. So that's it, sort of thing. Like, you wouldn't be in touch with that. No, that's it. I used to ask you to pick that up. <laughs> so you don't bend at all? And I notice when you sit, you don't relax into the chair. Is that normal for you? No, I'm a real, I used to be really slow. So why did you change? Um, because I'm thinking that when you were slothly, you didn't have a back problem. No, I didn't. So what, why, why the change? Because I think, <coughs> because my GP said that you can always tell people with back problems because they sit up right, and then the guy yeah. referred me to, he's talked about core strength and, you know. And that interplays with other things <coughs> around stress-related factors. People are in, at high levels of stress, people who are not sleeping, uh, people who have suffered from depression or anxiety. We know that that can influence the amplifier of the effect of the brain, which can sensitise the body's spinal structures. If you don't mind, I'm going to get you to close your eyes again. Yeah. And um, can you, if you were to visualise that, you know, that thought you have mm. when you, you might hit a bump on the road, like when you were last week. Yeah. What's that like for you? Well, just try and do it now. If you do it now. Oh, okay. What happened? I just... What did you notice in your body? Head starts, just didn't you? Just head yeah. I feel I'm broken, I feel I'm weak, I'm yeah. broken. I mean, my hair's grey, my skin's grey, I'm just... Um, did that all happen? Yeah. In the last four, week, four months? No, sadly it didn't. But, uh, <laughs> but just, that's how uh, you feel. You I feel like yeah, you've aged. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a dark place. Yeah, yeah, sure. And we've almost created a perfect storm because if your belief is that you've got had a scan and your joints are worn out, then when we ask people what that means to them, they think that their backs are crumbling or that with time, the more they use them, they're going to wear them out. Uh, I had this perhaps a vision of discs crumbling or collapsing. Yeah. And facet joints sort of being tied together and rubbing and arthritic yeah. conditions developing. Yeah. Horrible thoughts. They were horrible thoughts, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they become very worried about that. They start protecting their backs and abnormally stress these pain-sensitive structures and they start stop doing the things in life that give them meaning. They're too frightened to exercise, so that has huge impact on their general health and health comorbidities. I just feel like I'm probably, my muscles are probably tight, but I've not stretched them at all. Yeah. Uh, Is that because you're a bit worried about stretching them? Yeah. Mm. I'm worried about anything to do with my back worries me. So are you fearful of your back? Constant. Yeah, how fearful? Um. Well, as I say, I don't think the disc is going to go, but I just fear being in a place away from home where um, yeah. I'm suddenly... And you're faint again. Yeah, or well, I'm in a lot of pain yeah. and... And you can't get out. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want to go on the train, I don't want to go... Yeah, on yeah, 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 okay. One day my wife and kids went out and my little girl said, oh, one minute, who's going to dress dad? Right. And that, that hit me, I thought, oh, I can't go on like this. Yeah. That's not a good place no. to be. And then we can create a catastrophe around the fact that they're too frightened to do things that help them, and the very things that they've been advised to do often feed the problem that they've created. My employer put me through to a physio, if so was a fourth one, you know, occupational health, and they, they basically put me through loads of these like extension exercises, and that, I think, just finished me off completely. One of our research group, Ivan Lynn, published a paper just recently in the British Journal of medicine open, um, proposing that in fact disability around back pain is iatrogenic, that is it's health care system induced, where we hear the stories of people with pain like we have the last few days, 
around the pain started with not even, not even an injury. And then they go through this cascading process of seeking different treatments, given different advice, being told you're disc damaged or this is worn out or you've got a pinched nerve or you're going to be careful when you bend and hold your core and be tense when you move. And then they describe this process of becoming depressed, uh, highly anxious, fearful, start avoiding stuff, and then their life's trapped. The problem about my job as a, as a head teacher is that I'm, I'm sitting a lot. Yeah. Um, but I was just aware that I was getting increasingly uncomfortable around the, you know, the top of my yeah. um, glutes. And I stood up to try and stretch it, and it just seemed to get worse, and then yeah. I, I just passed out. And so we know that if you ask people with pain, they say, Our, my life is on hold. Because I can't, I don't understand it, I can't control it, and I can't do the things in life that give me meaning. With the physical journey, there's a sort of spiritual and a psychological journey as well. Uh, and I look back now, I'm almost embarrassed about how low I got, you know what I mean? Um, what do you mean? I, you know, this sounds ridiculous, no. but I was, I was suicidal. I think there's a now a general belief that in fact persistent back pain is something that we can't change. And that the best thing we can do is to really advise people to make the most of their lives, to accept their situation and, and you know, go back to doing things that give their life value so that they're less disabled. Now, I think that may be the fact for a very small group of people, but I think we miss a whole lot of people who have huge opportunity for change. And I think that's a view that needs to shift amongst health professionals, that we stop thinking of backs as backs being damaged, that pain does not equal structural injury, that movement is good for the body, that backs should be trusted to move in a normal way, uh, to give people strategies and confidence, help both healthcare professionals and physiotherapists and other healthcare professionals to give them a different view on pain, to stop describing backs as being caused by wear and tear and dis dis degeneration and disc bulges, to tell people that these findings are normal, and then to build the capacity within themselves in terms of understanding their pain and the context of their life to find ways to break that pain cycle. And we've seen examples of this, as we have across a number of years, and we've put these up on our Pain Ed website which is an, a free open access website that we are committed to try and change the story around pain, to make people think of it as something that is modifiable, that these are, there are ways in which people can take control of their life to get their life back. So what's happened in the last year then? What's been happening for you? Uh, I started up my own company and not yeah. stopped working, digging up. <laughs> you digging up? Yeah, yeah. No, water mains, gas mains, not, mains. Not bad, dig every day of my life. Someone in the back with an egg on. Dig every day of my life. Works nine, seven days a week, every month. I just don't stop working. So just keep your legs straight and bend over. And up you come, bend backwards. What are the key things that allowed you to change, do you think? Completely my mindset changed. Moving myself, I won't do myself no damage. Relaxing and moving. And yeah, that's it. Just my mindset was the big thing. The big thing for me was the breathing. Mm. Is this the relaxed breathing? It's good. Feel your legs working? Yeah. I've, I've never had to stand up at desk at work. I don't feel it anymore when I'm at work at my desk in that I think largely it's mind over matter. I don't think about it anymore. I sort of try and go to the gym at least four times a week. Um, I try and do, say, 40 minutes on a wave session or something. Yeah, and great. Maybe 10 to 20 on a bike. Just come, you're doing them quite quickly. Oh, you used to do it like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> just yeah. an side on, just bitten down towards your toes again. That's it. And yeah, we were trying to encourage you to do this a year ago. It was not, yeah. not easy, was it? <laughs> you begin to understand, hold on, this is all normal. And I don't have to have these spasms, and I don't have to be lying on the floor at meetings at school. And actually, I can manage my pain, and I can actually get it back to what it should be and take control of my own destiny. Suddenly you realise, well, hold on, I've not had a day off work for four months and I haven't felt bad. I started doing long walks, and then I started jogging half of it. Now I do. I run for two miles on a Monday, I run for three on a Wednesday, and I run for five on Friday. Jog on the spot. Show us your squat. No worries with that. No, nothing. <laughs> 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 <laughs>